Hello, Irish Whiskey fans, and welcome to the 2022 Irish Whiskey Society America Awards, the IWSA Awards, or Izzy's, recognize favorites amongst 13 categories uh, of Irish whiskey in the USA. We are live from the red carpet, and in a few minutes, we're going to announce the favorites among the 13 categories. Before we do that, though, this pre-show is going to take a look at some of the nominees that were voted by you, the fans of Irish Whiskey. Thanks for joining us live from the red carpet of the 2022 Izzy's. Let's meet the nominees. First up, you can see W.D. O'Connell up for favorite single grain. In the back, Tullamore Dew going vintage with the crock bottling. Powers John Lane in the front needs no introduction up for two categories tonight. Favorite single pot still as well as favorite premium Irish whiskey in the USA. Redbreast, one of three Redbreast expressions nominated tonight. That's the Kentucky Oak Edition up for favorite new Irish whiskey in the USA in 2022. The Gale from J.J. Corey, up for favorite blend in the USA. Bushmill 16, one of the core expression up for best or favorite single malt available in the USA. Next to Bushmills is the Jameson Black Barrel up for favorite blend, going vintage bottling. Ponamara, the Trailblazer, up for favorite peated Irish whiskey in the USA. One of the other nominees for favorite new Irish whiskey in 2022, the Gold Spot Single Pot Still from the Middleton Distillery. In the back, you can see the second entry from W.D. O'Connell uh, up for favorite peated Irish whiskey available in the USA. That's the Bill Phil. One of several nominees from the Teeling Distillery, that's the single grain up for the favorite single grain available in the USA. In the back, you can see the 14 year old single malt from the Pope Castle up for favorite single malt available in the USA. Another of the more than 10 nominees from the Middleton Distillery, the Method and Madness chestnut cask finish single pot still up for favorite single pot still. The last of the nominees for the peated category, that's Black Pits from the Teeling Distillery in the back, dressed in all black. The last nominee for the new, favorite new Irish whiskey in the USA is the Bushmills 12-year-old single malt Marsala finish. Green Spot in the back, Again, no introduction needed up for favorite premium Irish whiskey available in the USA. In the front, up for favorite everyday drinker, Slain, a uh, great value blend. In the back, going vintage bottling, that's Kilbegan up for favorite single grain available in the USA. In the front, up for favorite super premium, that's the Barry Crockett single pot still from the Middleton Distillery. In the back, up for two awards, the classic Powers Gold, up for favorite everyday drinker, as well as favorite blend. Uh, you can see Powers Gold has brought one of the children along with them tonight. Uh, that's the teenage version. Uh, baby Powers apparently uh, was left at home with the babysitter. Uh, finally, we can see uh, towards the end of the red carpet here uh, up for the one of the premium categories. That's another expression from Redbreast. That's the 15-year-old variety. 
And then lastly, we have two of the nominees up for favorite Irish cream, uh, the Trailblazer Baileys, and one of the newcomers into the USA from Five Farms. So those are the nominees uh, that are still here on the red carpet. A few have already entered into the bar, uh, but we're going to now go inside and find out who your favorites were voted by you, the Irish whiskey fan, across the 13 different categories. Uh, it's going to be exciting to find out who the favorites were for the first Izzy's. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Irish Whiskey Society America Awards. Tonight, we are going to announce the winners or favorites from 13 categories. Uh, we're coming to you by Coastal tonight. I am in Massachusetts. My name is Alan Dwyer. I'm the president of the IWSA. And with us tonight, assisting with the presentation and discussion on all the awards is Andrew from the West Coast. Andrew, you want to say hi? Hi, Alan. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Uh, this has been a uh, three month long process, starting with nominations, uh, whittling it down to the top three favorites in each category. And then we opened up the voting, not just to IWSA members, but to the entire Irish whiskey community in the States. Uh, so this is for everybody. And we're going to uh, walk you through all the different categories. You've already uh, seen the pre-show on the red carpet. So got to see a lot of the nominations. And uh, why don't we dive right in uh, to the first category. I suppose we should. And Alan, before we do that, it would probably make sense that we actually put a wee dram in our glass as we go uh, through the yes. So, So a wee dram in my glass is going to be some uh, Powers Go label. And, and I'm going to go with Slain, their triple cast blend. Excellent. And uh, we're not going to do this for every category to change up our whiskeys, but <laughs> this is just a key. To kick it off with, so. yeah, we're 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 not going to sample each of the nominations, so that would be, <laughs> so, I don't know if we'd make it to the end. So exactly, so um, launch it, launch it. So this is the inaugural Izzy Awards. Izzy for IWSA, and uh, it's it was open to everyone that resides in the USA. So this is really a awards for Irish whiskey industry um, that's available here in the States. Uh, and that's, uh, I think, an important distinction because as you watch tonight, you may wonder why certain uh, whiskeys are not maybe part of the top three or winning. Uh, and it's really because they may not be available in the States yet. Uh, don't have the distribution. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and we'll um, certainly talk about all the categories as we go. But why don't we uh, dive right in to the first Gosh. category? Let's do that. And uh, Andrew, if you want to, why don't you, I'll let you uh, introduce the, the first uh, few nominations. This is the category for, we wanted to start off with favorite everyday drinker. So this is going to be uh, whiskeys that are under the $35 cost available here in the States uh, that, you know, you would have typically on your home bar uh, for an everyday drinker. So Alan, of course, if we were together doing this in a bar, whether it was, it was a home bar or uh, someone else's bar, I'd be pulling out the gold envelope now with the nominations. And uh, so obviously we're not going to do that. We're just going to show them here on screen. So the, uh, the three nominations for the favorite everyday drinking Irish whiskey under $35 are first up, 
uh, Paris Gold Label, which I've just put in my glass here. Mm. We have Slain, which you have in your glass there by coincidence. Yes. <laughs> and then the third one is Tullamore Dew. Yeah, so I think uh, Powers and Tullamore Dew are probably uh, well, very well known by by most. Uh, two of the biggest selling Irish whiskeys. Slain is uh, of the three a relative newcomer. Uh, it's owned now by Brown Foreman here in the states, so it has a a USA connection. Uh, but it's the distillery itself is located uh, just north of Dublin. Uh, part of the Slane Castle estate. Uh, coincidentally, the IWSA is going to be visiting Slane Castle and Slane Distillery uh, in just a few months as part of our 2023 uh, group member trip. Uh, so again, these are uh, whiskeys that most of you or many of you have on your home bar. Uh, so let's see um, before we jump, before we jump into that, Alan, just an interesting comment that we have uh, three whiskies owned by three separate entities here, showing a little bit of diversity in the uh, in the category. So you mentioned Brown Foreman for Slane, obviously Power is part of the Irish Distillers Stable, and then Tullamore Dew uh, owned by Grants. So um, so yeah, it's nice to see, uh, like I say, a bit of diversity in the uh, in the finalists. Yes. Right, should we do the big reveal? Yeah, let's do the big reveal. Okay. And the Izzy goes to Powers Gold. Uh, so one of you know, one of my favorites, uh, you know, again, really no, uh, everybody's a winner as they say, just to be nominated. Um, and it's hard sometimes to uh, pick from the three as you see as we go, but uh, Receiving the most votes was Powers Gold, which is just a, a, a wonderful blend, heavy pot still component uh, from Irish distillers uh, yeah. down at the Middleton Distillery. Yeah. Now, Alan, um, you've touched on what the society is doing uh, looking forward, but one of the events that you hosted last year, uh, the latter part of the year, was the celebration of Powers, which uh, I enjoyed thoroughly. It was a, a great a great social event obviously online but also a great educational event and we were lucky enough to share some of the time that you had spent with carol quinn online uh, giving us a lot of the background and history of powers and folks who are going to watch this um we will obviously share that as well with them but uh, 50 minutes well spent with carol on the incredible history of powers as an irish whiskey label yeah definitely definitely and uh, powers was uh, received a few nominations tonight, uh, so we'll see how it uh, stands up uh, in okay. one of the categories coming up later. For sure. Okay, so crack on? Yes. So one of the things uh, you won't get tonight, you won't get the winners coming on and uh, giving you those long speeches where we have to play music to you know get them off the stage. And which could be a problem as the drinking continues, you know, as we go, but uh, exactly. we'll try to keep it. We'll try to keep it short and sweet and move some of these along. Okay. And speaking of, speaking of sweet, we're yeah. on to, uh, we're on to the Irish cream liqueur category uh, included because obviously whiskey is a, is a base, one of the base ingredients in the Irish cream liqueurs. So um, we should pull up the nominations. So, yes. uh, Bailey's, the the original, yes. as it says, the ones who uh, who nailed the process and and managed to make sure that the dairy component and the whiskey component were able to stay together way back when. Yep, Trailblazer in this category, uh, you know, stocked in most bars in the states for many many years, uh, and you know, I I think with this category too, this arguably is how many in the USA were introduced to Irish whiskey first. Yeah. Uh, as a, you know, as either this or maybe through an Irish uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, also nominated uh, was 
was Cool Swan and the five farms from County Cork. Yeah, so those are two of the uh, newer brands to come on the scene. And Cool Swan's been available for uh, several years now. Uh, five farms, a little bit newer. Uh, both are excellent, uh, high quality, uh, you know, products. Uh, I think as you go, if you've sampled any of these, uh, they all have uh, different ingredients, different uh, strengths of whiskey. Um, so they all offer a little bit different and they definitely have, there are definitely differences if you sample them. Uh, some are heavier, some are sweeter. Um, I suppose it's all what your particular taste is. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, time let's, for see our the, let's see who the Izzy goes to. Hey, and the Izzy goes to Bailey's Irish Cream. Bailey's. So uh, again, this one has been a, a staple in most bars, and and I think people are very familiar with this brand. So no surprise that. In our inaugural awards that uh, this would be the favorite uh, but i think we want to uh definitely keep an eye on this this category in this space because anyone going into american liquor stores here see how the shelves continue to grow with new entries and brands in this uh in this category so we'll see if uh, some of these continue to nip at the heels of uh of bailey's yeah yeah and i suppose if, uh, with Bailey's having, as you say, such you know strong and big distribution, all of these other brands who are doing a great job are looking to take a small slice of Bailey's pie. Um, so, like you say, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the coming year brings. So, right, let's move on. All right. So, favorite single have... grain. Single grain, yes. I suppose uh, should we talk about the category first, or do the yeah? Pull up I think so. Yeah, so this category is uh, not unique to Irish whiskey, but it's one of the uh, styles of Irish whiskey and um, probably has more brands and varieties in it than most, uh, you know, of your Scotch counterparts or American. Um, so this is a category where the um, component is primarily grain as the name would apply. So uh, you're not getting, um, it's not a blend. It's, and it doesn't have, uh, it has, I think you could have as much as 5% malt technically in it and still be considered a single grain. Um, you want to add any comments on? Yeah, and I suppose um, what's been interesting about single grain for me, um, and you know this and folks who are watching me know, I, I'm, you know, about a year into my whiskey journey, single grain has been a real eye opener for me over the last year. A lot of distilleries in Ireland are using single grain to get launched. Um, uh, quite a bit of it is is bought spirit, so they they bought it in. But they have been doing incredible work with different finishes, mm -hmm. and also to let people know that um, generally speaking, um, one of the main ingredients of the grain that you talk about actually is uh, is corn. Yep. Um, as a as an ingredient yeah so this is a good uh particularly in the states here uh it's a good entry uh point for a lot of american drinkers that maybe are used to bourbon and yeah, yeah that's got the m mostly corn as part of the mash bill so it does kind of provide a nice transition uh you know we should point out you know the sing the single grain category uh single just like it is with single malts, really, that just means it's coming from one distillery. Yeah. Uh, and it's typically a lighter uh, variety of whiskey, you know, but the, the grain that you're, you would be drinking the three that we're going to see here uh, is the same grain that would be part of the majority of blends that most people are familiar with. You know, so most, most of your blends are, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80% grain. Yeah. Um, so this is just one that is predominantly grain. Um, so why don't we take a look at uh, the nominees? Yes, indeed. So first up, uh, single grain from our, our friends at Kilbegan. 
Uh, then we have a single grain from our friends at Teeling. And then the third nomination, uh, which I think surprised uh, both of us, Alan, uh, was uh, from W.D. O'Connell, from Dahi O'Connell. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is really good to see. So I think with uh, Kilbegan, you know, which is its roots with the Cooley distillery, which is really arguably what uh, championed this category back, you know, over the last 20 years with the single grains that were released. You know, first it was Grenor and then uh, switched to the Kilbegan namesake. But um, when Teeling Distillery uh, was launched about 10 years ago or so, they uh, kept a lot of stock from that uh, sale of Cooley. Uh, so they had a lot of a lot of grain, aged grain, um, but they immediately launched the single grain here that you see as part of their core range. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, as you mentioned, W.D. O'Connell is one of the newer brands uh, the last few years and certainly new to the U U.S. and its distributorship is increasing uh, every day. Uh, and they're all very uh, distinct too. So Teeling has a finish in wine. The W.D. O'Connell grain is an age statement grain uh, using rye component finish. Uh, so they all kind of bring a little bit different um, variety to using the, the single grain component. Excellent. Excellent. Right. I suppose we should do our next big reveal. Yes. And the easy goes to our friends in Dublin, Teeling Single Grain. Yeah, so, yeah, again, this is part of the core expression, came out. Uh, so it's been really on the shelves of, of U.S. liquor stores for, for a, a while now. So I think uh, a lot of people have been introduced to this. Um, and it's no surprise that uh, it would be the favorite uh, in this category. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, lovely uh, expression in this category. Uh, I think the the wine finish, um, you know, brings a nice little sweetness, uh, fruity component to it as well. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Definitely one I've enjoyed sipping on this year. So, um, right. Let's, uh, let's move on to one of the fun categories. Not that there's anything uh, unfun about all of these, but one of the fun ones is... Uh, is the favorite new release uh, of 2022 here. And this is obviously, as you said at the top of the show, um, this is based on new releases here in the United States. Um, yeah, so this, uh, you know, I think we can take a moment here. Yeah, you know, this is the inaugural awards, as we mentioned. And, you know, I think a lot of these categories will, of course, be in next year's uh, ceremony as well. Um, and I think one thing we know is at least with this category, there'll be three brand new nominees next year. Uh, but this is an exciting category, particularly, I think, in the Irish whiskey space, because there are so many new distilleries coming online, particularly with their own uh, distillate and with COVID, uh, you know, restrictions with supply and shipping easing up you're seeing more and more hit the states. So I know there are, I think uh, that we know of five prominent new releases just in the next few weeks coming to the states. So this category definitely has a lot happening. Uh, and, and I think even with some of the restrictions still in place uh, in 2022, there still were, were a lot of uh, new things that that hit the shelves here in the States. So why don't we, why don't we take a look at what the nominees were? Yeah, for sure. So um, the nominees for favorite new release of 2022, the first is uh, from our friends, <clears throat> excuse me, from our friends on the Antrim coast, Bushmills 12 year old made its appearance on this side of the Atlantic. And that was early in the year. Um, and that's part of their core range of single malts. And the distinction with this in addition to being 12, so it fits in between the 10 and the 16, but this one has uh, an additional Marsala 
finish yeah own it to it uh, probably one of the um most anticipated uh, releases of 2022 was Goldspot. Yeah, so this was launched as part of Whiskey Live Dublin in June uh, from friends at Mitchell and Sons and Irish Distillers, uh, but just the latest edition in the spot range. And this one was released to commemorate uh, Mitchell and Sons anniversary. Uh, this one has a lot going on, uh, you know, in terms of different cask finishes, brings uh, some port into the mix for the first time uh, in the spot range. Uh, finished, I'm sorry, aged for nine years. Uh, so kind of fits in between the blue, uh, similar to the green spot, although that's non age statement, but uh, and less than the yellow 12 year old, but uh, really exciting uh, addition to the range. This is a limited edition though. Uh, yeah. they, so, uh, but uh, very much sought after and when it hit the States, it became uh, something that you, if it did hit the shelves and the liquor stores didn't stay long. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then, um, and then the last nominee was the uh, Red Breast Kentucky Oak. Yes. And this was, uh, for me, uh, one of my favorites of the year. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the uh what the american oak barrel did for the red breast which is typically very um you know more sherry influenced and this brought a, a whole new element to it i think it was um some people i think it, it, it got a lot of commentary um some people loved it some people you know i think go more for the more traditional red breast style. But obviously it was one of the top three uh, folk getters. Um, and I share its its uh, popularity. It's, uh, it's a great addition to the red breast range. Uh, so why don't we see which one uh, is the favorite of these three? Okay. And the Izzy goes to Goldspot. Goldspot. Which, yeah. Which is, as you said there in your comments, it's it's no surprise there was uh, huge attention given to it in in Ireland, and then when it landed on this side of the pond, as you said, whenever it hit the shelf in a liquor store, uh, it was gone. Um, so, yeah. So it's and you know, given it's a limited edition, um, it it won't it may not be around long. Um, so if you're lucky enough to grab yourself a bottle. Um, I still suggest you drink it, <laughs> but, but, um, as opposed to, you know, holding on to it, but, uh, if you weren't lucky enough to get a bottle and you find it somewhere, um, certainly order yourself, uh, you know, a glass or two, uh, to a local bar, take advantage of it while it's around. I don't think you'd be disappointed. Um, yeah. so this is, uh, yeah, I think, you know, you saw the three, uh, nominations here were all from, you know, two were from Middleton, uh, which has over 10 nominations tonight, and the other from Bushmills. So, you know, I think certainly um, some of the big players in the industry, uh, which have age stock and the distribution deals, you know, are able to get stuff to the states. Um, and continue to impress with some of their new releases, you know, in addition to stuff that, you know, are obviously are favorites in their core ranges. Yeah. And, and you, you mentioned there, I mean, you know, gets getting stock to the States. It's not just getting it to one country when, when they bring um, product here, obviously it's, it's essentially 50 different countries. And that's, that's the challenge of America. While it's a, uh, the biggest market for Irish whiskey, uh, there's a lot of legwork that has to go in and, and, and that's why the big boys, as we call them, uh, have good distribution. They have networks in place to to fill, you know, to fill it with. So uh, it, it's going to be fascinating to see this category in twelve months' time. Yeah, because we already saw it with, um, you know, we know the the number of states that are getting access to the whiskeys is increasing all the time, and more of the distilleries and bonders and brands are coming. Um, some of them already have 
uh, cult followings. So it's really just, uh, I think, part of it, too, to be honest with you, it's uh, getting people out to vote, you know, not the, it's, it's kind of the same as a, that's an election, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you like a particular whiskey, this was open to everybody, you didn't have to be a member of the, of the Irish Whiskey Society of America to participate. Uh, so, you know, certainly uh, take advantage, even if you aren't a member uh, next year, uh, when the polls open to, uh, it only takes about two minutes to go through these categories and uh, click on the nominations or, and uh, vote for your favorites. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, I started my evening here, Alan, uh, on the West coast with some gold label. Um, I have some gold spot next to it that I will be moving to shortly. So um I really enjoyed this whiskey to your point about the the the, the finish uh, on it. I, I just found it to be a very complex, um, very layered whiskey. As you know, I'm a massive red breast fan. Um, and obviously the red breast range, the, you know, that the nest is getting filled as we continue on. And I also have um tried the Bushmills 12 uh, this year, but um yeah, the gold spot for me was just uh, in a in a different league in terms of complexity and uh, and what it gave. So um, no surprise that uh, that the Izzy went there. Right, we should move on. All right. So with ah. our reference there to, you know, hitting the liquor store shelf and being gone with regard to uh, uh, Goldspot, uh, we wanted to give a shout out to the people, I suppose, on the front line who, um, who, who sell a huge amount of Irish whiskey, obviously. Uh, there is another category to follow for uh, pubs and bars, and and those people do great jobs as well. But we wanted to say thank you and tip our hat to to uh, some liquor stores across the country who do a great job of championing the Irish whiskey cause. So we should probably um, jump in with the nominations. Yeah, and these were all again voted by by you. So uh, Binny's, no surprise, based in Chicago. So. Uh, I think of our nominations tonight, we've got a pretty good geographic distribution, but so this covers the Midwest nicely. A uh, number of stores as part of their network, um, huge Irish whiskey selection, uh, bring in a lot of uh, product. Um, so if you can't find it there, as they say, you know, you probably can't find it uh, too many places. Yeah, no, no doubt. And then, you and I both have spoken about K&L in, in my backyard here. They have a number of stores uh, in San Francisco and south of there. I know you have uh, yourself bought some whiskey from them over the years. They certainly, in my opinion, they would uh, tend to have a, instead of having a broad range, they would have a deeper range. Um, they certainly stock more of the uh, smaller uh, Irish distiller producers and uh, and their Price their pricing is incredibly competitive, so the sort of, sort of place where those of us could do damage to our credit card. <laughs> yeah. One of the other things that's nice about the California uh, retailers too, for the most part, uh, they have the ability to ship to yeah. other states. So even though they're located on the West Coast, um, you can order from them and have it shipped to you if you live in a state. Uh, that doesn't have a particular product brand or just doesn't have, uh, you know, liquor stores that carry a lot of Irish whiskey yet because they, you know, in a lot of cases, these brands, they can't get into all the states. It's uh, yeah. a lot of work. So this that's a way you can take advantage. Yeah, for sure. And then last up um, in your neighborhood, Alan. Yeah, Norfolk Wine and Spirits. So in Massachusetts here. So uh, you know, this is a smaller store, not does not have a lot of locations like the other two. Um, but what they do have is a huge following and loyal customer base. So I think they have, uh, I almost want to say daily tastings. The number of tastings that go on in store is amazing. And there's a whiskey chat group that uh, is very, very active uh, on a daily basis. Um, so there's definitely um, never a dull moment in terms of discussing whiskey, uh, tasting whiskey. Uh, they also were um, uh, 
uh, a big help when we were bringing the society's bottling earlier uh, in 2022, uh, and you could purchase the bottle from them. Okay. okay. So why don't we take a look and see uh, who the favorite was? Yeah. And there you go. You just gave a great description of them. So the uh, the Izzy for the uh, favorite liquor store goes to Norfolk Wine and Spirits. In your yeah, so this is, uh, you know, great for them. Uh, shout out uh, to Bikram and everybody there that, um, you know, is so loyal. And, uh, you know, I think um, look forward to continuing to uh, participate in uh the uh, tastings and other events that go on there. Of course. Okay. So blended Irish whiskey, our favorite blended Irish whiskey. So I'm going to pop up the nominees. So okay. first up is um, The Gale from JJ Curry. Then we have a Black Barrel from Jemison. And again, uh, the winner of the everyday category, we have Gold Label from Powers. So blended being probably, Alan, it's fair to say the category that when most people, if they've gone beyond, as you were saying, you know, coming to Irish whiskey through an Irish coffee or through cream liqueurs, blended is going to be often their first, um, their first experience of Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think out, out of these three, you've got two from Middleton Distillery, the Powers and the Jameson Black Barrel. Uh, the Black Barrel is from a price standpoint a uh, little bit more expensive than the regular jameson expression uh, got the added element um, of the charring of the barrel hence the name yeah um, and then of course you've got the independent uh, jj corey the gale the first expression to come from the bonner uh, there um, and that's been uh, great to see that hit the states. It's been here for several years, but they've recently increased their distribution uh, now through Total Wine. So if you haven't had the chance yet to sample anything from JJ Corey, um, I think you'll be able to, or certainly more people are going to be able to in the states this year, because uh, that that was announced towards the end of of twenty two. Uh, so you should be seeing that in more shelves of USA liquor stores. Uh, but that's a really nice premium blend. Um, so yeah, and I, I would say, Alan, I, I, I love all three of these whiskeys. Obviously, I you know poured some gold label earlier on. I'm a big fan of, of Black Barrel. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've, I've, uh, and I didn't realize that we actually had it first here in America. It was launched in America first in about 2012, 2013. Yep. Yeah, and, and came to New York, and actually it was one of the whiskeys that we had at one of our tastings in a pub. Um, we actually did a little bit of a I'll meet you at the border kind of thing. We kind of oh. did a halfway, drove close to the New York border, and uh, were able to get a couple bottles, and <laughs> and then um, and then have them as part of our tasting so that was, it was when this came out it was actually a very big deal back then because yeah. at the time you know about 10 years ago uh you you didn't have anywhere near the number of, of irish whiskeys you do today so when this came out it was a really big deal um and it was a different you know variety of jameson so um, the other thing i, I would add as well as, as i was uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to be gifted a bottle of the Gale by a neighbor of mine this year. And I have to say, I absolutely loved it. I think we should say to people in terms of price, um, Powers is, is at or around $30 a bottle. The Black Barrel is kind of 35 to 38 or so a bottle. The JJ Corey, the Gale is, is essentially almost the two of them added together plus a few dollars. It's $75 a bottle. Mm -hmm. so yeah, think, yeah. yeah. So, and that's, um, you know, I think, Part of that is the independent label. It's tough to get into the States and get the, the distribution rights, whereas obviously for Middleton, they've got the volume. Yeah. And so that's partly what uh, causes the Gale to be a little bit more expensive than the others. Uh, why don't we see uh, what the favorite, though, of the three was? Okay. Jamison uh, Black Barrel. Izzy goes to Black Barrel. So 
Yeah, I think this has been one of the strongest growing uh, whiskeys here in the States. If you if you look up any of the, um, you know, stats that come out on Irish whiskey, this one's really leading the charge. So when they talk about Jameson, it's not always the, the core expression blend. Uh, this one's really been a strong performer in their portfolio. So I can't say I'm, I'm shocked by this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, certainly uh, a worthy favorite for this category. Yeah, definitely. Okay. An interesting category is up next, yeah. Alan. So we're going to look at our favorite peated Irish whiskey. So I'm going to bring up the nominations and then we can chat about it. Sure. So first up is the uh, the Connemara, their peated single malt. And then we have Black Pits from, uh, from Teeling, uh, also a single malt. And then uh, the second nomination of the evening for Dahi O'Connell and W.D. O'Connell with their famed Bill Phil uh, peated Irish whiskey. Sure. So I think first on the category itself, uh, you know, I think if we had done these awards uh, even a year or two ago, we probably wouldn't have had this category. Uh, Heat is definitely making a resurgence along with Irish whiskey. Um, but with all of the new distilleries and brands trying to differentiate themselves, everybody is um, at least experimenting with peat, I think, uh, in different ways of using it. Uh, so I think with Connemara, they're really the trailblazer. They've been around forever, again, from the original Cooley, Kilbegan uh, distilleries. This one's been around for a dozen years plus um, has different expressions, some age statement Connemara as well. The Black Pits came out from Teeling about two years ago now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's very nice. It's got uh, the additional, in, in addition to the peat compo uh, po component, it's got the Saturn's finish to it. So it provides a real nice sweetness and balance to it. I think, um, with this category, I think something to keep in mind is that, from what I can tell, no one's really trying to compete with the Scotch counterparts in the okay. peaches. And I think that, to me, seems like the right way to go. And, you know, particularly with, uh, you know, with Black Pits, for example, when it came out, um, it's very, uh, I think, easy to drink. And it's a great way to introduce yourself to the category because mm -hmm. uh, you're not overwhelmed with peat which can be very polarizing for some particularly if you're not used to it yeah. and i think so i think the additional wine finish uh you know really does a good job of balancing that out i think with wd connell um uh, you know this has been a very interesting one so they're up to now i think six batches of this um, so it's, and they just, so they keep coming out again, they've only been around a couple of years and, uh, this was a favorite right out of the gate. Um, pretty much everything that, that these guys have been putting out there has been, uh, received very favorably. So, uh, it's great to see them, you know, being in the top three of this category. There are many other expressions and brands that have peat varieties out there and more are coming. Yeah. Uh, so this this is a category yeah. you can see, you know, really changing potentially uh, as we go forward. I think I think actually a fair comment there, Alan. I think um, we could almost kind of draw a parallel with this category and the you know the new release. You know, you and I were saying we're excited for the new release category, knowing what's coming this year. I think there's a lot in the peach pipeline as well uh, for 2023. Uh, on a personal level, I, I'm um, you know, learning more and more about the peated Irish style, and um, I have really enjoyed the legendary Silky from the folks up at Schlieve League. Um, and I know they have got some, you know, some plans. So there's, there's definitely a, this is definitely a, a growing a um, category, and it's obviously it's great to have someone small, so to speak, like Dahi uh, here, and kind of middle sized with with Teeling, and obviously Connemara being, you know, one of the one of the bigger boys. It's it's a nice yeah. blessing. Of, of selection yep. and yeah and you have waterford distillery that's put out some peated expressions towards the end of the year uh in, to some extent 
probably too late in the year to really get a lot of penetration on U.S. shelves uh, to to garner more votes. Um, and there's some others that are uh, using their own peat, like Mickle out at Galway. Galway. Um, so that's actually using Irish peat as well. So you know, there's we'll see. Uh, I think you're going to see more and more people kind of get introduced to this and find that it's not as jarring as maybe their prior to, experience yeah. was from some of the Scotch whiskeys. So um, we'll see. But why don't we uh, why don't we see who the favorite of these three was? I don't wait. There we go. And the Izzy goes too. So it's Connemara's. Connemara. That's great. So yeah, again, Connemara is really led the charge in this in this category back when Cooley was um, when uh, the tailings were trying to differentiate themselves back in the day uh, coming out with you know double distilled and peated yeah. varieties things like that so this one has been on U.S. shelves for a number of years um, and it's good to see that uh, it's still very well liked by people. For sure. So from Pete, we're headed to um, arguably my favorite category. Um, and those of us who um, love our Irish whiskey, obviously there's all these different styles and categories for us, but single pot still being the category that uh, Ireland, I suppose, hangs its hat on. It's a unique style. Um, got lots of his history attached to it. Um, and was, you know, obviously... <laughs> You and I have talked many times. Redbreast 12 was my gateway into this. And, uh, and Redbreast 12, I'm, I'm assuming, is one of the nominations. Um, so let's look at the nominations and then we can chat about it. So mm -hmm. we have um, Single Pot Still uh, from Method and Madness. We have the Powers John's Lane. And there we go. We have Redbreast 12 as the uh, third nomination. So this, you know... I don't know, arguably could be considered one of the more competitive categories. Uh, you know, not surprising. You've got three of the fa the top favorites are from the Middleton Distillery, which, you know, has championed the whole single pot still, you know, malted, unmalted barley uh, style. Um, but there are many others. Everybody, uh, not everybody, but a lot of the new distilleries are uh, either putting out their own single pot still version um, or it's aging as we speak. So you will start to see, um, in some cases we've already seen it, maybe not in the States yet, but there are a few that have um, made their way to the States. So we're going to see more expressions of this style of whiskey from other distilleries other than Middleton. Uh, but for now, I don't think anyone's really complaining about what you know what we're getting out of Middleton because it's amazing what they can do, uh, you know, with uh, similar uh, mash bills and then just either by different cuts, aging, finishing, yeah. um, you get something as you know different as Redbreast and Powers Johns Lane, both are twelve year old. That's, that's the other thing to say here at the stage, Alan is. Um, Obviously, we know there's all these wonderful whiskeys coming our way, you know, this year, next year, the year after. Um, but it's going to be a while before a lot of the new distilleries have got 12 year old stock of of their own distillate. Yeah. And pot still seems to be one that, again, may, opinions could vary on this, but it seems like you you need it to age you know, you can't really release it. You can, but, you know, it's not, you cannot, you, you don't have as much leeway if you're releasing this at three to four years old. Um, uh, particularly given, like you said, where you've got a lot of this aged pot still that people are going to compare it to. Yeah, uh, but, you know, and the Method in Madness, um, interestingly enough, is one that does experiment. So you've got kind of the the Blue Bloods here from Middleton, and then Method and Madness is their micro distillery. Uh, so when this one came out a few years ago, this is the chestnut cask finish. Uh, everybody loved it because it was different, uh, you know, and I think hence the name, they they really experiment, and that chestnut cask really brought something additional to the table that you weren't getting in some of these others. So great to see that um, 
you know, that that's also getting a little bit of love here in the category. Yeah. Okay. Big reveal time. All right. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Izzy goes to Redbreast 12 year old. Um, probably would have maybe you could argue been a bigger surprise if this wasn't the favorite, given that, um, you know, it's been pretty much the award-winning whiskey every year in and year out. Um, back before this latest resurgence of Irish whiskey, this was, uh, along with Green Spot, they were the only two single pot still whiskeys in existence 12 years ago. And you couldn't get Green Spot here in the States. So this was- And, the there, was, um, and I'll, I'll, there was a time, um, I'm gonna say back 2016, 2017, Red Breast was available in, in the Costco's here in Northern California. Okay. And, yeah, and, and I'm sure folks who have been drinking it since then will remember that it was about $35 a bottle back then. Yep. And, yeah, and, yeah. 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 And, and, and it would go on sale for 28 And so it's no surprise that it's it's so established. Um, yeah. You know, and now it sells here um, for, I'm going to say, high 50s, high 50s to low 60s. Yep. Um, but Which you've got people still, like... Still a bargain. Yeah, uh, and, and and to their credit, obviously this is the, this this was voted by people on this whiskey, but to the to the credit of the Redbreast team at Middleton, they have expanded the range dramatically, and they're doing some they're doing some fun things. Yeah, this is one of three Redbreasts that were nominated tonight. Yeah, and uh, you know, so again, ten years ago, you couldn't get Green Spot here in the states, and Powers Johns Lane was not. Um, was just coming out around 10 years ago. You know, so it's really been in the last 10 years that you've seen this category expand, particularly here in the States. Um, but this has, you know, been the one that's been uh, the most well-known, I think. And, uh, you know, year in and year out continues to win awards. So certainly no surprise. Yep. Okay, right. Next up. Right, we mentioned earlier on that uh, as part of the Izzy's, we were tipping our hat to the people who helped actually, you know, at the at the at the um, at the front end of the cold face, um, you know, with selling, and uh, so we included an Irish pub or bar category, which I thought was a great thing to do, uh, mm -hmm. particularly as we're coming, you know, coming out of COVID, it's um, hospitality has suffered, so it's a way to encourage people to discover their local great. Irish pub or bar that does a great job with uh, an Irish whiskey selection. So three nominations in this one again. So we have, um, this is four green fields in, uh, in Tampa, down there in Florida. Um, uh, this is in your neighborhood, Alan. This is the Dubliner in, um, it's in downtown Boston, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And then this is uh, the old Shillelagh or Shillelagh in, um, I believe that's in Detroit and Michigan, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yes. So, um, again, pretty uh, wide geographic distribution here. Uh, the uh, Dubliner in Boston uh, has been open, you know, I want to say less than two years, uh, but right in downtown by the near the financial district, uh, a great space, a large venue, uh, uh, can do events. Um, so that's uh, great to see that them come back into that space there in Center Plaza. Uh, the Tampa, you can see from the, the image there, uh, that's a thatched roof pub. The only one uh, in existence here in the States, I believe. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's a great place. I've been to uh, the Tampa location as well as to the Dubliner. I honestly can't say I've been to the uh, Detroit okay. pub, okay. Company, but um, you know I've been down to. If you get down to the Tampa area, they've got a couple of uh, additional spots that they've opened over the last couple of years. Um, it's a great atmosphere, uh, certainly. Okay, great, and obviously, um, I'm going to say, Alan, we had dozens of nominations in this category right across the country um yeah this one's a tough, this is a tough category i think along with the store because um yeah 
you know, it's just, you know, you know, everybody's seen red breast, let's say, no matter where you live. But if you live on the West Coast, you may never have, uh, you know, maybe you haven't even been to Florida and vice versa. So yeah. this one's going to be tougher to, uh, I think, to gain a lot of votes because it's not as well known. Depending and, on and, what, and what, what I will say, Alan, is that having looked through with you, looked through all the nominations, um, we should um, tip our hat to the guys and girls out there in bars, pubs and restaurants who are doing a great job with Irish whiskey lists, with great selections, with interesting and fun flights that they're offering to people um, mm -hmm. and events that they're doing. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of work goes into that. So, um, so yeah, just want to acknowledge their hard work um, while we're doing this. Yeah. And I think too, just uh, another shout out because they've endured a lot the last couple of years, uh, you know, with, uh, with everything going on with all the restrictions and stuff. So I uh, certainly want to give, give them a shout out. Yeah, for sure. So let's, uh, let's see who the winner is. Okay. So the Izzy goes to the Dubliner up there in, uh, up there in your neighborhood. All right. So. Yeah, so the Dubliner, um, I've been to a couple times because, uh, again, they have not been open long, uh, but uh, it's a great space, serve food. Have I got to say, I was there in October and they had Blue Spot on the shelf. Very nice. And they also had, they. Um, I want to say, I'm trying to remember now, they, they had the spots, and so like they got things from... Uh, one of the brand reps and I believe they had the gold spot as well. So it was just kind of hadn't seen that on shelves anywhere at the time. You couldn't even get a bottle in the stores really. And they had it on the shelves. So, uh, you know, that was great to see. And, uh, you know, so a nice selection of Irish whiskey, certainly, and uh, a big venue uh, to do events. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So we're moving on to uh, the favorite single malt Irish whiskey. Right. And for uh, this, I think I'm going to pour my glass. So why don't we, I'm going to pour one of the nominees, nominees tonight. So as you, uh, as you announce the nominees, I'm going to pour one of them. Okay. I'll do that. And then I will reach and find a single malt here to join you in that. So uh, the first nomination is Bushmills 16 year old. Uh, second one is uh, Napo Castle, 14-year-old single malt. This is what I'm pouring. Excellent. And then the third one is uh, Teeling, single malt. Yeah, so that's the third nominee from Teeling Distillery tonight. Yeah. And uh, I'm joining you up, so I'll do, a, I'll do a Teeling single malt. There you go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, so what can we say? So teeling single malt. Uh, is a uh, multi-cask single malt, non-age statement, part of their core range that's been uh, pretty much on the shelves for a number of years now uh, here in the States. Uh, the the Pope Castle 14 year old uh, is part of their core range. They have, you know, the 12, 14, 16 year old single malts with has a sherry finish. Uh, and then the Bushmill 16, uh, again, part of their core range of single malts. This one has uh, the added complexity of the port finish. Yeah, yeah. I interesting, uh, the, the single malt category, obviously, um, certainly when I was growing up in Ireland, um, Bushmills was synonymous with single malt. Yes. That's always been their style. Um, but it's great to see um, other 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 players coming into the category. I know you're a big fan of Napo Castle. Um, yeah, and they and they should get. Um, I think they've been around for quite a while. They've gone through a couple of uh, redesigns. So you know, some people may have from a few years ago some bottles that look a little bit different than the current uh, version you see there. Of course, they have the famous old pot still uh if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one of those but their uh their single malt range uh is very well received and it should start to see even bigger distribution um because they've 
recently switched over the last you know couple of years and now with the, some of the restrictions easing up i think you're going to see it uh in even more stores as we go forward okay so, yeah to... i'm not lucky enough to um have tried that one yet All right here we go and the izzy for favorite single malt goes to the 16 year old from bushmills mm -hmm. So as you said, kind of synonymous with single malt. So not surprising that this would be uh, a favorite in this yeah. category. And, and, and drawing a similar line here, Alan, uh, with Redbreast, um, you know, it, it's been around for a, a number of years here in America. It's well known. It's well distributed. Bushmills is in the same category of that, as that. Yes. Um, and obviously, yeah. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, that the jury is out or is split on, you know, the new redesign. There are some people, there's some people who prefer this is obviously the new style bottle for folks who don't know um obviously part of it's you know like every brand every few years they get a redesign um but yeah it's it's you'll find a pretty much a bush mills of some offering and one of their expressions pretty much everywhere you go um so yeah like i said synonymous with um with with single malt from from the island so maybe you uh you maybe just think of a future new category. We could do um, favorite bottle design. <laughs> <laughs> not what's in the bottle, but whether or not you like the bottle or not. There's uh, yeah. some pretty interesting <laughs> bottles out there that come out all the time with some of the new distilleries and everybody trying to, you know, make a splash on the shelf so they can differentiate. So that could be a future future category maybe. We're going to do a favorite bottle design. Will we do a worst bottle design as well? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, they have to be empty though, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not what's inside. It's the, it's the don't judge a book by its cover, I guess, as exactly. they say. Exactly right. So we're we're getting near the um. So we're, we're what we're doing. So people know as we go through all these, we're actually building similar to awards uh, events that people would see for you know, for movies and songs, et cetera. So we're building towards you know, the favorite distillery and we're a couple of categories out from that. So we're about to jump the, the price ladder here. So mm -hmm. this is the favorite premium Irish whiskey that sells from 35 to a hundred dollars a bottle. And yeah, the so nominations. Go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. The nominations are, uh, you mentioned a couple of times in conversations on previous categories, Alan. So Green Spot, we have Powers, John's Lane, and we have Redbreast 12. So um, second nomination for Powers Johns Lane. Um, Redbreast obviously won the uh, the pot, single pot still. Uh, first time we've seen Green Spot. Yeah, we started off with the everyday drinker category. And this is now kind of stepping up in price. Um, we wanted to differentiate some of these. Doesn't necessarily mean they're better, uh, but it... Um, oh. We thought it would be fair to, you know, to have pr different price points because not everybody's able to enjoy whiskeys that cost, you know, $75. So uh, we did break it down by price. Uh, you know, the of these three, they're all from Middleton again, uh, and they're all single pot stills. So that's kind of interesting. So I think um, they tend to be a little bit more expensive you know, that that category of whiskey and particularly these that have won many awards over the years. Um, yeah. So let's see uh, what the favorite was. There we go. Green spot. So the easy for favorite premium goes to goes to green spot. Yeah. So uh, non age statement single pot still part of that the spot range from Mitchell and Sons. This was a cult favorite. For years, it was the you know arguably the most sought after Irish whiskey in the states because you couldn't get it. Uh, you had to go to and even in Ireland you couldn't get it fifteen years ago unless you were really in Dublin. Um, so it was tough to find. And then once it started to come to the states, I think uh, made a lot of people here very happy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and uh, which is you know probably why. Uh, you can see it's the favorite. Yeah, and again, going back to this, the similar theme that we've talked about on other categories, wide distribution um, in both stores and bars and pubs. So it, it, a lot of people will have seen Green Spot on shelves and on back bars. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very, it's an approachable pot still too, 40% ABV, you know, so it's not, um, even though it's, it's premium, it's, it's a, it's reasonably priced. So uh, you can find this probably for between 60 and $70 mm -hmm. uh, on average. Um, it's so it's in a similar range to the other two, to the John's Lane and the, and the Red Breast 12. They're all, you know, within probably plus or minus five dollars of each other, kind of in that 60, you know, 55 to 70 range. Yeah, for sure. OK, so let's uh, step it up. Super premium, hundred dollar mm -hmm. plus. So That's obviously your wish list whiskeys for for yeah. Matt. Yeah, I was, was Santa Claus good to you? Did he bring you any of these? <laughs> yes. So first up, we have um, Middleton uh, Barry Crockett. Also from Middleton, uh, Middleton very rare. And then we have Redbreast 15. So to your point, an, another nomination for Redbreast, uh, their 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, but no surprise of the other two, um, two of the the higher end offerings from Middleton uh, and, and yes. highly sought after. Yep. So I think, uh, you know, the Barry Crockett expression named after the former master distiller from Middleton and, you know, the most expensive of what I'll call the core range of single pot stills that they do. You know, in the last few years, they've done a lot of limited editions and other expressions um, that are pricey as well, but kind of out of their core range. And that's a, a lovely uh, single pot still expression. The the very rare is, you know, a, a annual issue or expression, you know, comes off with the, the year, the vintage year. And it's arguably one of the most sought after Irish whiskeys out there, right? So it's an approachable uh, whiskey. That one is um, a blend. And it's usually... Um, anywhere up to 30 years components of 30 year old whiskeys in there of single pot still and grain. Um, but um, every year it comes out, it's 40% ABV. So it's very approachable for everyone. And um, there's limited quantities and it's mm -hmm. goes for uh, a lot of money when it uh, goes back out onto the auction block. So it's, you could argue it's probably the most collected Irish whiskey. Okay. Um, and people try to uh, build a collection from every year. So once people get into it, they, um, you know, try to backfill years. So you see a lot of these on the auction block. Okay. So a little, little bit of an addiction there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, so heavyweights here. So let's see uh, who the favorite amongst uh, these three are. So there you go. The easy goes to Middleton, very rare. So to your point of it being a sought after whiskey, obviously people out there who voted on this thought it was the one that came top in this category. Yeah. So interesting. So that, yeah, again, I think it's, um, it's got, I don't want to call it a cult following because maybe it's even more so than a cult following, but uh, definitely has a following. I think it's very anticipated every year. People are, wondering when it's going to come out. I think uh, Middleton recently has been doing it in, as opposed to in some years where there was only one release, they've been releasing it twice during the year. Okay. So it's not a, it comes out once and if you get it, you get it kind of thing. But, uh, you know, retails for, I want to say 170 to $200 probably on average. So definitely a definitely a treat whiskey. Yeah. So I think uh, you know the the Barry Crockett is similar. You can find sometimes you'll find that for over two hundred in some places. The Redbreast fifteen, uh, more closer to um, you know a hundred dollars, more yeah. on the, the lower end yeah. of that range uh, from a price standpoint. In case you're wondering. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. Yeah. So that right. leads to the favorite favorite it's distillery. If I had a drum, I would do a roll on it, but I don't. So um, yeah. we'll have to put on the budget for next year. So um, we're essentially at yeah, the, the favorite Irish uh, whiskey distillery category. So this isn't going to surprise too many people who the nominations are. So first up is 
Dingle Distillery down, um, obviously in Dingle down there on uh, in the southwest in Kerry. We have Middleton Distillery in Middleton in County Cork, which we've talked about a number of times tonight. And we have Teeling Distillery uh, in Dublin, which again we've talked about uh, a couple of times tonight. Yeah, so no surprise. Teeling had three nominations. Middleton had over ten. Uh, Dingle didn't have any uh, individual bottle award uh, nominations tonight. Um, but I think what this shows you is it's it is a very much beloved distillery, and would not surprise me to see uh, Dingle uh, crack through the top three nominations this year because they are getting. Uh, much wider distributorship. Their single malt core expression is in the U.S. now as we speak. Um, so I think up until about a year ago, they were doing the batch releases, which had some availability in the States, but not necessarily widespread. So they're going to be much more available going forward. Um, so, and I, they definitely have kind of a, a cult following um, so yeah. that will be interesting to see um, as we go forward against, you know, two of the heavyweights in Middleton and Teeling. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. So the Izzy for the uh, the favorite Irish whiskey distillery, no surprise, goes to uh, Middleton mm -hmm. Distillery down mm -hmm. in County Cork. As you said, uh, over 10 nominations. Um, and in many ways, Alan, uh, we have um, a huge debt of gratitude to pay uh, to the folks at Middleton, you know, when we look back in modern history, uh, those of us who know and love us know Irish whiskey was on its knees back in the 60s and 70s, and um, everything was centralized to the distillery in Middleton. And from there, we've, you know, we've started the the, the renaissance that we're all now experiencing. So, um, yep, and that's you know the rising tide principle, right? Lifts all ships. So they've definitely been. Um carrying uh, the whole industry up and you've got all these new distilleries coming and they're chasing after Middleton, arguably, um, you know, so there should be room for everybody. Uh, and I think a lot of people are always looking to try new whiskeys, um, but they, you know, hard to argue with the uh, core expressions that come out of Middleton. And as we saw even with the new category, they're not resting on their laurels, you know, with Gold Spot and the Kentucky Oak Red Breast. They've got the Method of Madness micro distillery, so they're always experimenting. So uh, they're not just going to sit back and, um, you know, hope people keep buying the same brands. <laughs> they're going to keep uh, keep pushing the envelope forward too, which is great. So you, I think you get the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, from no, for sure. So. Um... There is a look at all the winners um, over the evening. So 13 categories, 13 winners. We will obviously share out all of this um, through the various uh, with Irish Whiskey Society America social media outlets. We'll share it to the website as well. Um, and you see it on the YouTube uh, channel. Yep. We'll have the video up shortly. Um, you know, any... Um post review commentary i th i think i have a few thoughts but i'll i'll let you go first maybe as you look at the the list of of favorites there yeah i i am um, obviously you know we touched on middleton there at the end no surprise they they've got a head start on everyone because they've been distilling now obviously back in those darker days that we referenced they weren't distilling full time they were distilling sometimes just weeks or months a year but they're they've been able to lay down stock lay down inventory of older spirit and we're now starting to see that uh, in either on its own or blended in gold spot would be a good example of that i'm going to guess that there's some very uh, older components um in that um but i everything i hear and read about uh, the industry back in ireland is that uh, middleton are incredibly supportive of all the other d distilleries um and i think that can only be good for the industry um I think it's nice to have seen a number of nominations uh, made it to the final three uh, of some smaller players, um, in, independent players. And obviously a nomination for JJ Curry and Louise McGuane and her team was one of those. And Dahi O'Connell and WD O'Connell um, 
was another. So that to me is a huge positive sign. We have the big boys continuing to open doors, as you said, not sitting on their laurels. Um, and yet we are seeing this new generation of people innovating, both with the spirits that they're using and the finishes that they're applying to it. And I think it's it's only good news as we look into 2023. Yeah, definitely. I think, again, uh, keep in mind, as I, I know you know too, but back 10, 12 years ago, there were really three distilleries. So uh, we now have 40-ish. Oh, maybe or maybe, more in, maybe even 50-ish. So, yeah, it's hard, you know, so... You know, it, to say it's exploded is, is an understatement, but that's all happened. And really, um, yet a few, you know, from 2012 to 2015, like Dingle coming on board. Um, but really, in the last five, six years, uh, was when it really, you got the bounce. So we really haven't been able to see everything yet from those just new distilleries. And even uh, some of the older ones, um, you know, we're just starting to get the distribution in the state. So um, if you're looking at this list and, and saying, geez, where's, you know, a particular whiskey that, I, you know, you had in Ireland or maybe you did find on your shelf, um, you know, it, I think it, it, you'll see things change potentially going forward as the distribution increases. And I, I think the other thing I would say is uh, get out and vote, you know, so when we do this next time, um, yeah, you know, you've got people that are very loyal to to a lot of these brands, particularly from Bushmills and Teeling and, and Middleton. Um, but if you want, you know, that I think um, this is not indicative of the quality of of the newcomers because there are some great new whiskeys out there, some great new bonders that are putting brands out there, and uh, I think it's just going to take um, more distribution, and more people trying it, and then actually putting their glass down for a moment and taking two minutes to vote next time around. And then, uh, exactly. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, and again, you don't need to be a member of the Irish Whiskey Society of America to participate in the Izzy's. Um, but uh, we certainly would welcome you to join. Um, so anybody who's interested, certainly go to the website at irishwhiskeyusa.com. Memberships lifetime for a small fee, basically less than what it costs for an average bottle of whiskey. And, uh, you know, you can be part of the community because uh, our tagline is celebrating Irish whiskey in the USA. That was really what the Izzy's were all about, trying to uh, bring some attention and celebrate everything going on with Irish whiskey here in, uh, in the States. Excellent. And, and I suppose, Alan, if people have made it to uh, to this part of the video when they watch it um, and they're not members, uh, I, they should be because they've obviously uh, <laughs> they, they've been with us for all this time, which is greatly appreciated. Um, I hope people have enjoyed um, what we've put together. Um, and I hope that uh, people continue to follow us through the year on uh, with all the various work that we're doing. And uh, that when we launch the Izzy's for uh, the coming year uh, in the winter of 2023, that people will take the couple of minutes to vote. Uh, we look forward to that and look forward to seeing more and more people in person this year and actually join uh, a, a dram or two in each other's company uh, this year as we slowly make our way back to normal. So, um, so I suppose with that, Alan, we should uh, wrap up the inaugural Izzy's. Um, congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to all the nominees. Thank you to everyone who took the time to vote. Um, hundreds of you did, uh, which was fantastic. We we appreciate that. And um, and yeah, we'll look forward to more. So we should probably do a slancha. Yes. So congratulations to everybody who participated. Uh, thank you to everybody who watched tonight and uh, who will watch on the replay. And we look forward to uh, like, Andrew said, sharing a whiskey with you in the future. Slancha. Slancha.